Good morning, folks. We're going to hit the current space weather conditions, look at where in the world the cold is taking over, got some eye candy from Chandra, and we'll see two important ways geomagnetic activity can be excited, including how the solar flares do it. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find a much quieter day. No more significant flaring, a few minor eruptions at the limb, coronal hole turning through on the south, and if you recall from yesterday, we expected minor solar wind impacts were coming too. At least one of them and maybe both have arrived. The glancing blow from the filament eruption three days ago looks like it hit yesterday evening, and a possible coronal hole stream may have further amplified the solar wind a couple hours after that. So far, the geomagnetic disruption is very minor, not even at a low-level storm condition. The big northern sunspots are still facing Earth today, the biggest core well in excess of the size of Earth, but it's the magnetism of the sunspots that tells us why it's gone quieter the last couple days. The opposing polarity groups with size were strongly interacting during the flaring sequence, but they have set in a bit of separation now. We'll continue monitoring them as they head for the limb over the next couple days. We're off to Mongolia, where while everyone in weather is talking about the heat wave coming to the west this week, Mongolia is seeing extreme cold and record snow. There's always that other side of the coin somewhere on Earth. Up next, we're going way out to a distant space where a long time ago in a galaxy cluster far, far away, a massive explosion occurred 200 million years ago. In the wake, the jets from the poloidal magnetic system burst plasma and other material out into space in the region took on a very different look. Here it is in optical, the visible light range. Chandra also scoped the X-ray emission from the central region where the explosion took place. The radio signature of the jet material is still visible as well. The activity overall produced a strung cluster of stellar pearls on a string. We have seen that in other places too. The first article from the journals today is this. While I attempted to explain it in simple terms this week, why a solar flare can make its own electrical impacts on Earth, this is the more complex version. It's technically called a magnetic crochet. We've discussed this before, but it was long ago. Basically, the solar flare surges plasma density in the ionosphere that begins to disrupt Earth's magnetic field, which then causes electric currents to flow, which further disrupt the geomagnetic field. Again, that's called a magnetic crochet. Excellent example from 2011 in this paper, and yes, that is exactly what happened with the X-Class flares earlier this week. Lastly, folks, the IMF-BY, the Interplanetary Magnetic Field, BY. It's the magnetic field of the solar wind, also called the heliospheric current sheets, the sun's version of what we study at the galactic level. This can also have significant magnetic effects when it hits the Earth, kind of like the significant magnetic effects on our entire solar system when we're hit by the galactic current sheet. We greatly appreciate your support. Two good papers today. We've still got eyes on our star. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.